This video is brought to you by Storyblocks Video. Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome to Creative Tuesday. As filmmakers, we can't always find the right locations. Maybe you need a specific building in the background or endless open landscape. But you also have problems finding the right location? Let me know in the comments below. Maybe a next video idea would be about location scouting. Anyways, either you shoot it all on a green screen, but that doesn't always look so good. Or you simply change the background to your needs. And this technique is called set extension and is used in almost every big production. Creating a set extension is not that hard, but it does come with some complications which we'll get into. But let's start with the basic principle of a set extension first. Place your camera on a tripod and film a landscape. Then in post-production, and this even works inside Premiere Pro, you take a clip that has an interesting element, place it on top of your shot, head over to the effects controls and under opacity pick the mask tool to cut out that interesting element. Then feather your mask a bunch and align it so that it matches with your background. If there's a color difference then just simply use Lumetri to color correct that. And you can keep doing this, you can keep adding stock clips of various things as long as their perspective kinda matches with your shots. Now we get all of our stock clips from Storyblocks video. Now they're not just our sponsor, but we also make use of their library on almost every project. It's a very big library packed with stunning 4K stock clips and it keeps growing every day. We really love it as we can just simply download unlimited video assets without additional costs. And this means we can try out a bunch of clips and if it doesn't work, we can just go back and download a few more. I can highly recommend it and you can check it out by clicking the first link in the description below. So now that we know how a set extension works, let's add a talent in there. We still want to change the background, but the talent sits in the way. The one way to fix that is by making sure that your talent doesn't come in front of the area that you would like to add new elements into. If you do decide to change the whole background, then you're gonna have to mask out your subject. Now you could go for a rotoscoping technique in After Effects, but honestly, I've never gotten good results from that. So I would really encourage here to use a green screen. This is a portable one that I can highly recommend. It's pretty cheap and you can take it with you everywhere. The positive thing about pulling green keys on location is that your colors and lighting will always match. So what you do is shoot your talent in front of that green screen and then move out of the frame and take an empty shot of your background. Going back into Premiere Pro, that background shot can go into the bottom and the green screen shot on top. Use the mask tool again to draw on the inside of the green screen. Next, look for the ultra key effect and drag that over to your shot. This allows you to select and remove the green. Now, since you have your subject on a separate layer now, you could place your stock clips on top of your background, but underneath your subject. Now, one thing that you might be missing now is camera movement, since we shot everything from a tripod. And this was necessary so that your different layers will match. What we could do is add fake camera motion in there. And we actually have our own preset pack with 8 different handheld motions which you can download for free from a link in the description. Simply add one of them to an adjustment layer that lays over your entire shot and that's it. If you do would like to add real motion, then you're going to have to work with a motion controlled slider or robot arm. Now we don't have a robot arm, but we do have some motion controlled sliders. Now, we got one from Edelcrone and one from Syrup. We did a video for both of them which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Now we are going to use the Syrup slider as it's more suited for heavier cameras. Basically I can program it to make one specific movement, take my shot with a green screen, step out of the frame and make that exact same shot again. In post-production, we pull the green key and sync the camera movement, and you'll notice now that it matches perfectly. Adding the background elements in there is gonna give a problem, since they need to follow the movement as well. If we would have set the slider at a constant linear speed, you would be able to simply animate the position of those elements and make them follow. When there's a larger movement with panning and tilting, you're going to need to motion track this, and this can be done inside Adobe After Effects. Premiere Pro does not have a tracking option, unfortunately. Now I would go for the 3D camera tracker, which we've covered various times on the channel. When the analyzing is done, you'll get a bunch of points. Right click and choose Create Null and Camera. Then add your element in there, make it 3D, then copy the transform values of the null object and paste it to the element so that it sits on that same location. Finally, set the opacity back to 100 and that's it. Now, of course, when you have no talent in the foreground, you could go completely handheld, and this is really cool as a POV shot. 
First, let your talent walk into the scene and then show what she is seeing. You don't need to green key, you can just jump directly into the 3D tracking and adding your elements in there. Color correction is one way to make your objects match better together. Keep in mind that elements in the background are usually out of focus. Now you can use the sharpness tool from Lumetri for that to simply decrease the sharpness. Now if you still have trouble matching everything, a simple trick is to add an overlay effect. And I'm talking here about sun flares or weather effects. And these you can also find on Storyblog's video. If you do like to keep it free, then check out video.pexels, which is a free stock website. But of course, the quality and offer is not the same. But it does help to get you started. So right here, I've got a sun flare. Place that on top of your entire edit, then go to Opacity and change the blending mode to Screen or Add. And this will kind of cover up any mistakes and not draw too much attention to it. And that's how you can make any background that you like. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for the support, and as always, stay creative. Hey guys, this Friday I'll be going back to Iceland and I'll be doing some landscape photography, so that's why I have to pack my gear. Now, if you would like to follow me, then make sure to follow me on Instagram, where I'll be posting daily tips and tricks on how to do landscape photography through my stories and also post a daily photo from that beautiful place, of course.